The government reckons that state schools in England are more flush with cash than ever. Mr Speaker, there is more money going into our schools in this country than ever before. We are investing record amounts in our schools. But school funding this year is at a record high. But the UK statistics watchdog has scolded the government several times for misrepresenting the figures. So there must be more to this story. What's the big question? Everyone has to answer. Because if the picture is so rosy, why are banners like this going up outside playgrounds? And why are parents getting begging letters to help keep schools afloat? Who's telling the truth about school funding? The government says that school spending is at record levels. And if you look at total spending on schools in England, that's broadly true. However, the number of pupils has gone up by about 9% since 2010. That's an extra 700,000 pupils across state-funded schools in England. And when you look at spending per pupil, that's gone down by about 8% in real terms since 2009. So there's less amount of money per pupil for each school. So, between 2017 and 18, the government spent £49 billion on schools, which is why they say they are spending more than ever. But if you account for inflation, schools only have as much as they did back in 2009. And the number of pupils has risen. Schools are basically having to educate 700,000 more children with no extra money. If delivered, the 8% cut in spending the people over the current decade would be larger than any seen over the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. This amounts to the biggest funding cut schools have seen for over 30 years. And for head teachers, this means making some really difficult choices, like letting some staff go and asking those who are left to do far more. You've got teachers driving the school bus, buying their own supplies, and even cleaning the classroom after school. In some schools, the curriculum is also getting narrower, as things like music and drama classes and sports activities are being cut. Others can't even afford basic science equipment. I think that some people have felt forced into a corner because we're trying so hard to make an impossible situation not affect the children who are in our care. We need to be very clear with parents and the wider community about how much money is missing from schools. This is why so many heads have taken the unusual step of speaking out publicly about what they see as a funding crisis. It feels awful because it's for the children, it's for the children's future, it's our country's future. And I feel devastated. I, feel, I worry about it all the time. But some people say that schools can do more to cut the fat. There is some feeling within government that actually the Department for Education and that schools in particular within that have been relatively well protected. And that whilst, of course, times are tight, on the face of it, an 8% cut over eight years ought not to be impossible for any public service to manage to do. One government minister has even said he'd bet any head teacher a bottle of champagne that they can identify more savings. But head teachers paint a very different picture. There is no more fat to cut. The system is under is under huge strain. We're not magicians, you know, we're being expected to do more with effectively less money. These are the marketing schemes for all three pieces of coursework. And in order to try to salvage something for it's not just about how much money schools get from the government, but also how much support there is available from other children's services that are run by hard-up local councils. So things like early intervention, family services, youth services, they've all been cut by the end of 2019-20 by around 20% per child. And in many cases, schools tell us that they have to pick up the pieces. As essential services are being cut, Schools are having to expand the care and support they offer, piling even more pressure onto teachers. And it gets worse. Cuts to benefits mean schools are having to cope with rising levels of extreme child poverty. Heads are reporting that more children are showing up for school hungry. Some teachers are even washing children's clothes and helping to feed parents. We, we've had parents that have passed out in the, in the school hall um, just through doing without meals themselves. 
Just one side. With the pressure mounting, teachers say morale is at an all-time low and their workload continues to rise. Quiet. Quiet! Many teachers are burning out and leaving the profession, and who can blame them? But society needs teachers now more than ever. We need to be properly funded because we are frontline services for families. Whatever is happening in society, homelessness, poverty, parents in the criminal justice system, all of these things affect schools. You know, it's, it's not just about education, it's about the pastoral care, it's about the support that we have. There's only one place this will end up. More children from poor backgrounds fail by schools who simply can't afford to give them the education and support they need. That's why we're seeing teachers, parents and pupils getting so political. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And subscribe to watch more in this series.